Hello and welcome to Vinslow Academy. So in this video we're going to build a Java REST API. So we'll be building it based on Spring. So we are here in the Spring Initializer where we'll create our initial uh, project. So here you have some basic parameters. For example, you can define the name, the packaging, the Java version, uh, etc. But what we need to do apart from the basics here is to add some dependencies. So we'll go up here and we'll be adding Spring Web. Then we'll be adding uh, security, so Spring Security. And that is basically the two dependencies we need for this tutorial. All we need to do now is to click Generate and we'll get a, a downloadable uh, Java file that we can open uh, within Java. So let's head over to IntelliJ. So I have now opened the uh, downloadable downloadable zip that we got from Spring Initializer and the first time you open that in IntelliJ it will set up uh, the project for you with solving all the dependencies. This means that for example the web and the security dependencies that we include will then be uh, downloaded uh, and set up within the project. And once that is ready you are ready to write code. So as we see here it finished up so I'll just enhance this. And now we have our demo project with our source main and we have our demo application right here. So what we want to do now is to create our first uh, class where we can add our REST controller. So I will just uh, click here, new Java class, and I'll just call this hello world controller. So within our a hello world controller class here we need to define this as a rest controller so we'll say rest controller and then we need our first method that will return something where we'll add our endpoint so we'll create a product method here that returns a string and this is just to be hello world that is to take no parameters but it to return the string hello world this is my app, like such. And then we need to define the request mapping uh, on top of this method. So we'll say request mapping. And here we need to say what method we want. In this case, we will want a request method get because we'll just be returning. So within uh, REST uh, applications, there is the get, post, put, and delete, which is the for most common used and you can use all of these uh, here by just uh, change this. There are, is also a few others but the previous four is the most common used. But in this case we will stick with the get. Uh, so then we need to define the path that you need to enter uh, in order to activate this method and get our string returned. So we'll say path and here we'll just say hello. So let's try to run this. So the Tomcat has now started up with our application. So let's take a browser here and say localhost. And instead of this, we'll say e. And as you see here, we get to log in. And even if I try to say hello, it gets to the login page and that's because we activated uh, an added dependency spring security which, which by default add uh, basic authentication meaning a user and a password so let's go back to our application then we'll go into the properties file so we'll go, so we'll go in here in the application properties then we'll say just the first line here so we'll say spring security user name and this is just going to be user one and we're going to say spring security user password and that is the password so that will just be one two three four uh, and this is the way that you can control uh, the basic authentication for a single user uh, just by default in spring security then spring security also support more advanced uh, security where you can have uh, user management uh, and you can have different users running, uh, but that is out of scope for this video. But you can of course add on this uh, on yourself. So let's head back to our application. 
can just say user one, password one, two, three, four. Uh, and you should like this, one, two, three, four. And here it said variable error, and that is because we are now not at the at hello. So let's try to do this. And when we insert the page uh, on the uh, endpoint and port that our local host Tomcat was running, and then the path that we defined in the code slash hello, we got to the hello world, this is my app. And we had basic authentication to get to this. So this is how you make a simple REST uh, API in Java with basic authentication. This tool we're going to look at how we do Angular can make a call to a backend, make it return a string to us, and then print it in the front end in our Angular app. So I have this example Angular app right here. So what I wanted to do is to, when I click this button, I wanted to return and display a string from my backend. So let's just minimize this. So here I, I am in the Angular project, and in my backend I have this demo hello world that I have uh, made using uh, a tutorial handbook for Academy. So you can look up that if you want to make it as well. But basically what this uh, Java API do is to whenever you hit the endpoint uh, slash hello, it will just return a string hello world, this is my app. So that is the string I want to display in my Angular content. So let's get back to the app. So here first off, I will need the method that the button should activate. So I will call this get string. And it takes no parameters because it's just a simple get that will return the string. Apart from the method, I have made uh, my string here, which is where I will store my string, and also the variable that I will make uh, attachment to in the front end. And then I have imported the HTTP client from the Angular common library, where I then have made this variable, or variable in my constructor called HTTP. Because that is what I'm going to use to uh, call the backend. So I'll say this slash HTTP for this uh, variable here. Then I will say get, because I make a get request. Then I need to input the uh, URL to my backend. So let's go back here. So I will just start this up. And then I will try to call it just to make sure everything works as expected. So it's up and running. Now I'll go back here and I will say localhost 88 and then slash hello. And I can now see that it's working, so I can just copy this URL where I return my string. Go back into my project. Then in the URL, I will simply put in this uh, URL here for, for localhost for the daily slash hello and then I will subscribe to the call that I'm making here so that I will so that Angular will be aware of when the response is returned and update my variable based on it. So I make a response here, type any that could be a string. So now we say that response is a variable here or maybe I should call this this one demo, so it's very different than the demo. And since our response object in this is coming from the backend in the variable response, we we'll say go into the response team variable and then take the value from response. And that uh, we are assigning to this uh, my string. Like so. So this, this is all we need to make our little method to call the backend. Now we need to attach this to our frontend while we head over to the original part. And in here, I just need a button that I want to initialize this call. So within this button tag, I can just say click. And then I can open to my get string method uh, in my uh, type file. And now I just need to show the value that is being saved. So this is my string. So now whenever I click this button, it should call the method that we have created here, which will then update the variable value, my string which is then displayed front end. So let's see. And this. So if I click this button now, as you see, hello world, this is my app. So this is how you can connect uh, Angular front end to, uh, for example, Java backend or basically any backend uh, uh, that you have that uh, provide an uh, uh, API that you can call. Uh, in this example, it's just uh, return the same string. But you can basically make it between complex objects that you can then use to manipulate the front end dy dynamically based on, for example, the user that has logged in, or if you want to show some 
uh, the storage tab from the database where you have stored data of customers or something like that, the possibilities is basically unlimited uh, when you start to connect the front end and the back end uh, for processing. So this was uh, the end of this video. I will see you next time on Windows Academy.